The victim seems to have passed out. Detective arrives on the scene, takes a sniff, says, oh, I don't smell almonds, not cyanide. What's going on here? Smell of almonds and cyanide? Well, what are almonds? People think they're nuts. Actually, almonds are not nuts. Almonds are the seed of the fruit of the almond tree. The seed of the fruit of the almond tree. All right, it's not almond tree, it's a bonsai. Would you expect me to have an almond tree here? When you break open the seed, inside is the almond. That's what we eat. Well, interestingly enough, it has a smell. That smell is benzaldehyde. So what's the cyanide connection? Almonds contain a compound called amygdalin. And when it breaks down, usually when you bite into it or upon digestion, it releases both benzaldehyde and cyanide. But it's the benzaldehyde that smells. That's the typical smell of almonds. Cyanide itself actually has no smell. Now, there are some almonds that contain a high concentration of amygdalin and therefore cyanide. These are called bitter almonds. That's not the ones that we eat. The ones that we eat are sweet almonds. And they've undergone a genetic mutation and they produce less of the cyanide, so it's very safe to eat. In fact, it's very healthy to eat uh, uh, almonds. You're not going to get poisoned by cyanide. But there have been cases where bitter almonds were actually used to poison people. So if someone then smelled the mouth and smelled benzaldehyde, they would come to the conclusion that there had been cyanide poisoning, thinking that it was the cyanide that had the smell. But it's actually the benzaldehyde, which is totally safe. So if someone is poisoned with cyanide, let's say potassium cyanide, there would be no almond smell at all. Well, there's more to the cyanide story though because it's not only almonds that contain amygdalin, it is also contained in the seeds of other fruits, such as apricots. When you cut open an apricot, you find the seed inside. Looks very much actually like the, the almond. And that also has amygdalin and therefore cyanide. What's the interesting connection here is that there's a belief among some alternate practitioners that eating apricot pits can have an effect on cancer. Some even claim that it can cure cancer. Why? Because they say that the cyanide that is released is toxic to cancer cells, and because cancer cells are multiplying more quickly than other cells, it has a greater impact on that. Uh, in fact, uh, apricot seeds are even sold as laetrile, or at least an extract of them is sold as laetrile, sometimes called vitamin B17, total nonsense, there's no such vitamin. And laetrile has been, in fact, examined scientifically. There have been a number of placebo-controlled trials showing that there's no evidence. You may remember Steve McQueen, the American actor. Uh, great actor, Bullet, what a movie, one of the best car chases ever. Uh, he was struck down with mesothelioma, which is a, a, a lung disease, a type of, of lung cancer. He went to uh, Mexico to be treated with Laetril, and of course, you know, the end of the story, he died uh, uh, prematurely. There are also stories that emerge from the Hunza Valley in Pakistan. That's where James Hilton located his classic novel, Shangri-La, where people supposedly live to ripe old age of 120, 130. Of course, they don't have any birth certificates to prove it. But the uh, alternative practitioners say it is because of all the apricots that they eat. Well, there is no evidence of their longevity, and there's certainly no evidence that they eat the pits of the apricot. So don't go looking for cancer cures in apricot pits. But the apricot themselves, yeah, that's pretty good. That contains a lot of beta carotene. And beta carotene is the body's precursor for vitamin A. And believe it or not, there are about a million people every year in the world who die from vitamin A deficiency, and about 250,000 children who go blind because of vitamin A deficiency. I wish that we could all give them apricots to eat, but we can't. Well, one possibility is to give them genetically modified rice called golden rice. That would take care of a large percentage of the problem. Unfortunately, the activists many of whom undoubtedly also believe in the apricot pit story, won't have any of the golden rice. So there you go. When you sniff for almonds and don't smell it, it does not necessarily mean that there has been no cyanide poisoning. And uh, 
don't worry about our victim, he's actually okay. He just played the role.